My name is Ethan Ortiz. I'm the founder of cybersecurity consulting company Here You Go. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to quarantine an endpoint using Symantec Endpoint Protection 14. To leverage this capability in Set 14, I first need to configure the Set 14 Manager to support this through the Host Integrity feature. The Symantec Endpoint Protection Console Administrator needs to assign a Host Integrity policy to the group or collection of groups which will contain endpoints for which we wish to send the quarantine command. In this video, I'll demonstrate two different implementation options, one where any group can contain endpoints to be quarantined, and another that designates a group to be the quarantine group, which I will name Restricted Group. Before we get to the REST request, let's take a quick look at what the SEP console admin needs to do to prepare a group containing endpoints for future quarantining. These are the steps I'm going to cover to enable endpoints in a group to be quarantined. Let's start at the Set Management Console. First, I choose the group I want to apply policies to. I verify that I'm in the Policies tab. I click Add Policy to add a Host Integrity Policy. Next, I need to assign the policies that will take effect when an endpoint in this group is placed into quarantine. I'll add a quarantine AV policy. I'll add a quarantine firewall policy, which is set to restrict access to most resources on the network. And finally, I add an application and device control policy to restrict local file registry and USB device access. I move over to Postman to demonstrate how to send the quarantine command to any group. The benefit of setting host integrity policies on all groups affords me the ability to quarantine any endpoint in any group at any time. But the con is the administrative overhead on IT personnel. The admin must be sure to add the host integrity and quarantine policies consistently on all groups. These are the steps that would need to be carried out on all groups. I'll send the authenticate request to obtain my token for this video session. Please see the prior video on authenticating to set manager for details. The token is now set in the Postman set 14 environment variables. To quarantine the endpoint, I send the place endpoint to quarantine containment request to the set manager, which will hold the command in queue until the endpoint checks in. The resulting command ID response is placed in the Postman environment for use in the next command. I want to check the status of the command by sending the get status on previous command request. I'll refresh periodically until I get a state ID 3. A state ID equal 3 and substate ID equal 0 tells me this command was completely processed by the endpoint. To remove the endpoint from quarantine, I simply send the remove endpoint from quarantine request. I confirm that the command was successfully received and executed by checking that I receive a state ID equals 3. I'll cover the second scenario of using a dedicated group for quarantine. Using a dedicated quarantine group has the benefit of only having to manage policies on one group. The downside arises on the REST client programming side, whereby the developer needs to keep track of the group memberships for each endpoint that is placed into quarantine. The SEP console admin still needs to configure the group with the host integrity and quarantine policies. Let me go over what I'm about to show. First, I'll retrieve the current group ID and hardware key for the endpoint I want to quarantine. Next, I'll record the restricted group ID for when I move the endpoint into the quarantine specific group. I will then move the endpoint into the restricted group. I'll send the usual place endpoint into quarantine containment request. I'll send the get status on the command to check for the state ID equal three. To remove the endpoint from quarantine, I'll send the remove endpoint from quarantine request. 
I'll check the status and confirm I received the state ID equals three for the removal from quarantine command. Lastly, I'll send the move endpoint back to previous group request and confirm that I receive an OK response. I'll retrieve the current group ID and hardware key for the endpoint I want to quarantine. Next, I'll record the restricted group ID for when I move the endpoint into the quarantine specific group. This test parses the results for a group named restricted group and it captures the group ID and stores it in the target underscore group underscore ID variable in the Postman environment for later use. I will then move the endpoint into the restricted group. Since the endpoint is now registered to the restricted group, I can now send the place endpoint into a quarantine containment request. I'll send the get status on the command to check for the state ID equal three. I'll refresh until I get a state ID three. To remove the endpoint from quarantine, I'll send the remove endpoint from quarantine request. I'll check the status and confirm I received the state ID equals three for the removal from quarantine command. Lastly, I'll send the move endpoint back to previous group request. and confirm that I receive an OK response. In review, I covered how to prepare your groups to enable quarantine capabilities via the CEF14 management console, I covered how to quarantine endpoints in any group, and I covered the multi-step process to quarantine an endpoint in a dedicated quarantine group. If you liked it, like it. Of course, Here You Co is available to help you with innovative cybersecurity advisory services for corporate and personal digital defense. I have over 20 years of security experience and the company name says it all. I'm here for you.